Hello and welcome back to the Old Golden Black for this uh, Daily December video. Start of a little series within the series of the Daily December videos now of looking back at the calendar year of 2018. And it's been probably my favourite year as a Wolves fan, I'm sure with many of yours as well. Not only the, the, start, of the season, start of the year, the first half of the year where we did so well in the Championship, but the way that we've adapted and grown into the Premier League season as well has been uh, really, really pleasing. I think it's probably been the best year uh, in my lifetime as a Wolves fan. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below about that statement. But today we're looking at the players specifically who have shone this season. And I know that Nuno goes on about the team and how the team is really important and how there's no greater player than the team. But there have been a few players who have stood out this season. And you might disagree with my three that I've chosen uh, so let me know in the comments again uh, who you would have chosen for your player of 2018. But also there's a, there'll be a poll in the uh, in the video somewhere where you will be able to uh, have your say of the three that I've chosen, the three uh, on the shortlist here. The first player on the list is the most consistent player, I think, uh, of the whole squad, and that's Connor Cody. He's played every league game in 2018 so far. If he doesn't pick up a yellow card against Liverpool... I'm recording this before the game, by the way, so if he has picked up a yellow card, he will miss his first uh, league game of the year uh, against Fulham. Uh, but he's a player that's improved so much from the player that we saw being brought in in 2015 and playing centre midfield and not really settling in that, in that position. Then Paul Lambert putting him into right back didn't really fit. We've seen him grow into that sweeper role really, really well. So much so that he's been linked with an English, England call-up uh, and Gareth Southgate has watched him a number of occasions and said if he can show that he can compete at the top end of the Premier League then he will be considered well we're seventh in the league at the moment at the time of recording so possibly by the end of the season we'll see him in an England shirt fingers crossed the next player on the list has to be Ruben Neves uh, a world class player in the making a superb performances in the championship and superb goals in the championship to, to confirm our promotion in some style and he has shown its signs recently of being able to do it in the Premier League as well. The Everton game, I think, it has to be his uh, high watermark as a Wolves player. A goal, an assist, and an all-round superb performance. We haven't seen him quite reach those levels in the subsequent games. But we did see against Bournemouth last week, he's starting to grow again and just get back into good form. I think we'll all remember his goals against Cardiff and Derby forever. Uh, the volley against Derby is the best goal I've ever seen in the flesh, uh, no doubt about it. And um, just his overall leadership qualities came to the forefront in those couple of games against Cardiff and Derby. At that period, he really was another captain on the pitch, I, I felt, uh, particularly the game against Cardiff. And the final player on my list is Matt Doherty. At the end of Paul Lambert's time at the club, I thought that Matt Doherty may follow him elsewhere. I thought he wasn't cut out to be a Premier League player or a player at the top end of the Championship either. I thought, I think, and he's come out and said that he was overweight at the time. His uh, body fat percentage was quite high. Uh, clearly, Nuno saw that, got, got him working on the uh, training pitch and got him down to a much healthier weight. He looks more athletic now and he's much faster and he's more, you know, to be able to do the job that he does running up and down that wing all through the game and every game. He's only missed one league game this uh, calendar year through suspension. And we saw how important he was in that game that he missed against Hull, where he we just didn't have that out ball out to the right-hand side. Now, in the summer, I called for him to, to be more active in his goals and his assists, and he's certainly done that. He's chipped in with two match-winning goals against Crystal Palace and Newcastle, and then a match-winning assist against Chelsea as well. So he's, he's stepping up to the Premier League. And not many people thought that that would happen, particularly after the game against Leicester where he scored an own goal and got tackled by Vardy and had a really poor game in that game. But he's, it took him until about the West Ham game away from home in the Olympic Stadium to really come into his own. Um, he dealt with Benjamin Mendy and the players that Manchester City had on their left-hand side. He did really well in that game. But we've seen him grow and grow and grow. And I think since, since really September, we've only seen him make one mistake and that was against Huddersfield for their first goal and as a result of his great form he's been able to get an international recognition from Ireland and get his first caps there. I'm sure that he'll be a mainstay in the new team particularly because Mick McCarthy is going to be the manager there who of course signed him back 
long, long time ago now, 2011, I think it was, 2010, 11, um, from Bohemians for £75,000. It's amazing to consider how far he's come in that time. So, personally, if I had to pick between the three of these players, I would go for Doherty purely because of the way he's improved in the Premier League and how important he is to our team. But the other two are, are been superb as well anyway let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and tune back in tomorrow for the moment of the year 2018 cheerio